So today we're going to be talking about Liquify and how I use it to correct little bits of uh, anomalies that we might see in some of our images, particularly where underwear is concerned on models. So Liquify has had a bit of a bad press over the years, particularly because people have kind of done crazy things like make people have ridiculously perfect body shapes, uh, a little bit like what I'm doing on the screen at the moment where you'll get a bigger bottom and smaller shoulders and a tinier waist and all kinds of ridiculous things like that. That's not how I use it. I use it to correct uh, minor adjustments to uh, things that uh, perhaps just uh, need a little attention. Okay, so uh, let's uh, talk about Liquify and uh, let's start off with the tool that I use the most uh, is either the forward warp tool or the push left tool. Both do quite a similar job actually, um, and depending on my mood of the day, depends on which one that I uh, use uh, on that occasion. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the forward warp tool and show you how we use that to correct uh, these little uh, bits of underwear digging into the model skin just here. Let's move across to our brushes and we can see we've got our normal kind of uh, brush size slider just here. And obviously we can also still use our square brackets on the keyboard left and right to uh, turn the uh, brush size down or up, uh, however we wish. Uh, the next slider that we have is our density slider. Now this is, uh, you want to think of this as to how much of the brush is sort of being used when we're uh, moving it around the, the image. If we set it to 100% and we just do a quick slide down there, you can see that pretty much the whole of the brush is being used uh, to um, uh, a weird effect on the skin there. Okay, let's just go ahead and uh, restore that back and turn that slider down to, uh, all the way down to, well, three, there we go. And now if I do the same effect, uh, same movement, you can see we're only actually using the kind of center part. So the effect is being graduated out from the center to the outsides of the brush with the main part of the action all happening on the, on the center of the brush. Okay, so that's the density slider. If we uh, just set that back to around about 50% there, we'll look at the pressure slider next. If we put the pressure slider all the way up to 100 and we just uh, move our uh, brush around, you can see that the change is really quite dramatic, okay? We have very little control over the changes that we're making, okay? Everything's happening all at once, so we're moving all those pixels around. So if we slide the pressure slider back down to 10, say, and we do the same now, we can see that the same movement on our tablet is giving us much less uh, of a change on the image. Uh, that allows us to have much more control over the changes that we're making. And when you combine that pressure slider with the density slider, you get a really, you do really do get a great deal of control over the, uh, over the changes that you're making. Have a play with those sliders. Try different uh, combinations of the density and the pressure. See what works for you best with the size brush that you're using on the image that you're using. You'll want to use different settings for different tasks. Have a play with it, see how you get along. Okay, so one more thing to point out with our brushes over here is this very important pin edges uh, checkbox. So it's only relevant if you're actually editing something which is close to the edge of the frame. If we look over to the left hand side here, and if I start to make some changes over here, let's just turn the pressure up and the density up to make those changes a bit more dramatic. Okay, and you can see that I am making some quite dramatic changes but I'm not losing the edge of the picture. It's remaining where it is. And that's because I have the pin edges uh, box checked. Just go to restore all one more time, uncheck the pin edges. And if I do the same again now, you can see we start to lose the edge of the picture because we haven't pinned those edges. We've got nothing underneath that, uh, that background layer. And uh, so we're actually seeing a transparent background. That's gonna take quite a lot of work to fix that in uh, Photoshop afterwards using either the patch tool or the clone tool, healing brush, things like that. Um, so far better off is to check your pin edges and then when you start making changes over there, you won't have such a great deal of work to do afterwards. Uh, let's uh, zoom in on uh, this little area just here, which is uh, the area that we're most concerned with. We've got our forward warp tool selected, and we're now gonna select the size brush uh, to 
correct what this bra strap is doing. Ideally, you wanna be using a brush which is around about the same size area of the area that you're gonna be changing. So you can see the area just here that we're changing, and I've got a brush around about the same size to match it, okay? When I come down to do the bra strap there, we're gonna go down to a much smaller brush. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's uh, change our settings here. Around about 30 is kind of what I like, and around about 70 on there, I think, is about right. And now, uh, we're a little bit high on that density. Take that down. And there we go. We can start to see those changes taking effect there. As I come towards the brass strap, I'm gonna go with a smaller brush. There we go. And we just keep tucking away just down there. And also the other side, smaller brush. Okay. And there we go. Now when I'm doing underwear, uh, that sounds wrong. <laughs> when I'm correcting underwear, um, I don't just pull the skin back down. I will also push the uh, bra strap or the knicker uh, lines back up as well to meet the skin where it should. So it's just a tiny little tweak just there. And then that matches in there quite nicely, I think. Okay, so that's pretty good. If we go down here, we've got our preview button here. We can turn that off. We can see where we were to begin with, and then we can turn it on and off, preview it, and that looks pretty good. Okay, so what we can also see is where we've pushed that uh, skin down just here. We've also distorted the background a little bit. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter too much because we're talking about pillows and cushions and bed sheets and things, which are pretty random items anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. But if you had a, a horizontal or vertical background uh, and you distorted it, then you would need to correct that. Uh, now, one of the ways that um, uh, the liquify tool gives you to, to help that is this reconstruct tool here. We've got exactly the same settings over here. We've got the brush size, the pressure, the density, and we can change all those things. Um, we can change those things uh, as we did with any other brush. Um, so what we can do is you know, drop the pressure down a little bit, drop the density down, and I'm just gonna stroke over where we've uh, made this um, uh, pillow just go out of line down here. And we're just gonna stroke that back, and that should just come back nicely to where it was before, okay. And, okay. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna preview that again. So that's where we started from, and that's where we are now. So that line has been pushed back quite nicely and pretty much back to where it was originally, just a little bit more up there. There we go, one more preview. And yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Okay, so there are a couple more things that I uh, do need to show you with regard to Liquify. Uh, that Reconstruct uh, brush tool is really good. Um, however, uh, if we uh, go to the Reconstruct button down here, this gives us our revert reconstruction. And if we, we start off at 100%, if we take our slider all the way down, you can see our changes coming back in and then we eventually get back to where we started from. So it's a good way of getting back to where you started from, but being able to do it in, uh, in little increments so you can uh, have some control over uh, the uh, changes that you've made. Okay, so uh, one or two more things to show you. Let's uh, go right back to the beginning, restore all. There we go. Uh, and uh, we are gonna talk about the freeze mask now. So this is uh, uh, another great way of not destroying that, uh, that background information back there. So all we're gonna do is select the freeze mask tool and we are going to paint some red onto our background. And we can get nice and close to our subject here. Not too close. But... So you're always gonna have some distortion in the background because you can't get that layer mask actually up to every single pixel, because uh, then it starts to go really quite weird. But get it nice and close, and then we can always use a little bit of uh, healing brush, patch tool or whatever to correct any anomalies afterwards. Okay, so there's our, um, our freeze mask. Now anything under that red area is not gonna be affected by anything that we do with any of the tools within the liquify now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our forward warp tool again. Same as before, we're gonna get a slightly larger brush here and we're just gonna push that down and we're gonna push that down and we can do this reasonably quickly now because we've had some practice. 
and uh, there we go you can just see those changes are taking shape and nothing under here I'll prove that by just moving my brush around on there nothing under that red mask is being affected uh, which is really quite cool and uh, once again we just go back to pushing our bra strap back up to meet it okay once we're done and we're happy want to get rid of that red mask we can go to the Thor mask there we go it does sound like a character from a Marvel movie doesn't it Thor mask there we go just brush all of that out of the way and there we have it let's click on our preview and there we can see our background has been pretty much unaffected by those changes so that looks pretty cool okay so I hope you've enjoyed this video um, if you have if you're watching on the YouTube channel please give it a like uh, you can subscribe by clicking on the button in the corner of the frame and if you want to give this a go in your own time you can download this image in the members section of my website so you can play around with it and practice in your own time okay that's it from me for now thanks a lot bye for now